We've been lucky in that none of the tomatoes that we planted here at our studio garden have succumbed to the beet curly top virus. Back in July, we talked about this disease that's relatively new to our state and is showing up in several counties this year, affecting tomatoes and peppers. The virus is spread by little leafhopper insects and they cause the plants to die, they cause severe stunting, and we see the symptoms by that characteristic purplish veining of the foliage. A lot of us are crossing our fingers and hoping that this disease, the beet curly top virus, doesn't show up much next year in our state. Well, even though it is the later part of the summer and the production of our tomatoes has kind of slowed down, I wanted to show you the different varieties of tomatoes that we're growing here at our studio gardens. Uh, you can see that we're growing our tomatoes in one of our raised beds and they're doing quite well. And because we've planted four varieties that have indeterminate growth habit, we've supported them with these reinforcement wire cages and also these cages made up of hog wire. And I've seen many a gardener try to support these beasts with these small cages like this, but as you can imagine, it doesn't work very well. I mean, you can see the plants just really spilling out of even these large cages. Uh, we've got these supporting some of the dahlias in another part of our garden. And you could also use these for the determinate variety of tomatoes, those that only grow up to about a certain height, start producing fruit, and then kind of quit growing. But for the more rambunctious, indeterminate varieties of tomatoes, we need to have something a little more heavy duty like the hog wire or the reinforcement wire. Well, this first variety of tomato here on the end is a real oddball of a variety of tomato. It's called the Riz Tomat, and it's a real unique tomato in that it's the only one I know that has cluster type fruit. You can actually separate these little pieces of tomato into little tomato nuggets right from, from one, one piece of fruit. And it is sort of an oddball and conversation piece in the garden, but it doesn't offer much when it comes to taste. They're a little bit bitter, but uh, the, pl the uh, tomato fruit doesn't have just a whole lot of pulp. And one thing to remember about tomatoes is that the bulk of the flavor is in the pulp. Well, we don't have to worry about taste when it comes to this next variety we have right down here. This is the Beams Yellow Pear Tomato. And these are so tasty, so sweet. I've always enjoyed the little pear tomatoes. Growing up, uh, we used to have these in our garden and I always enjoyed just going out, picking them right from the plants and uh, snacking on them right out in the garden. I always thought they looked like little yellow light bulbs. There's sort of a myth going around about yellow tomatoes in that a lot of people say that they're lower in acid or they have a low acidity. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's not exactly true. Just because a tomato is yellow doesn't mean it is lower in acid content. The yellow tomatoes and some of the orange tomatoes have a higher sugar to acid balance, so they just taste less acidic than the red tomatoes. So they, uh, they taste sweet, they have more of those sugars, and those extra sugars actually mask that acidic flavor. So acid or not, the yellow pear tomatoes are absolutely delicious. They're very sweet, great to snack on out in the garden. And you can also see that we've, we've still got lots of uh, production of tomatoes on our plants, even here in the hot part of the summer. We've got lots of green ones still coming on. So that's, that's true of the, the little yellow pear tomatoes, and also a lot of our cherry tomatoes keep producing in the heat of the summer. Well, we can't say that for this next variety. This tomato is the Kellogg's Breakfast variety, and it's a large, flat-fruited, beefsteak-type tomato. And I've got one right back here. I have to kind of look for these fruits because there's not very many on there. It's kind of typical of those large beefsteak-type tomatoes. They don't produce well in the heat of the summer, but uh, you can see the size of this tomato. It can get up to about two pounds, large, flat-fruited beefsteak type, and uh, the coloring is this nice persimmon-type orange color, the Kellogg's Breakfast Tomato. Well, right down here, our last tomato I want to show you is another orange variety. This is called the Orange Banana Tomato, 
And uh, although they're not very banana shaped, they are somewhat elongated. Again, a neat uh, orange color. And this is a sweet, tasty paste tomato. These are also very good for drying if you want to use sun-dried tomatoes in a recipe. Another thing you probably notice about the orange banana tomato is that they're very susceptible to cracking. You can see a lot of the cracks in the fruit of these plants. The reason tomato fruit crack is due to inconsistent moisture levels or fluctuation in the moisture. What happens is the plant is starting to ripen this fruit and for some reason the uh, plants get really dry. We forget to water them, they get really dry and the plant thinks that a drought is coming and the fruit that it's started to ripen it wants to protect. So it starts to form a really hard rigid outer surface on the fruit to, to kind of help protect that fruit. And then if abundant moisture is again supplied, the plant will take up that water, the fruit will begin to swell, and because it has that now rigid outer surface, it will crack or split. So ways we can keep this from happening are to try not to water our plants on a yo-yo watering regime. Don't let them get too dry before we water them again. Try to keep them evenly moist. Uh, soaker hoses help to keep the plants evenly moist, and also the application of mulch around the roots will also keep those moisture levels from fluctuating too much. And also, some of the varieties are just more susceptible to cracking than others. Well, you might try growing some of these unique tomatoes in your garden next year, and I hope the cool fall temperatures will spur your tomato plants on to producing lots more of these delicious homegrown tomatoes.